All right, so uh, we're here at Incinerator Studios, and we've got here with us, we've got Justin Gary, Brian Kibler, and John Fiorillo um, from Gary Games, and uh, we kind of talked them into sitting down and uh, taking on our lead uh, lead programmer and uh, chief technical officer, Gary Weiss, uh, in a game, four-player hot seat game of Ascension. And uh, guys, howdy, thanks for doing this. Oh, well, technical. I got the Marvel sensei. I'm so the coldest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, probably, I'm, probably, I'm probably gonna get like beat this game, but that's all right. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta change. Nope, that. too late. You're the apprentice. We started. <laughs> <laughs> My iPad too. John, you're on. John one. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> it's great. This is actually my first uh, four-player hot seat game. I've been playing a lot online. The tons of people now. I've been uh, got a bunch of friend requests and a bunch of random people. Been uh, been pretty awesome. It's fantastic. Well, we built Ascension. Part of the reason we built Ascension was try to make it faster than other deck building games. So we had, uh, you know, it was great because you could play, you know, set up a game and play in under half an hour, and that was really the, the best thing out there. And now that I can play games against people in under five minutes on the app, it's like, <laughs> okay. I definitely have, you know, between between a dozen and three dozen games going on my phone at any given time. So there's so a couple. Like, that's a quick uh, question for you. You play primarily on your, your iPad there or on your iPhone? I play on my phone more often than not just because it's what I have on me all the time. Um, I, mean, I, I play on my iPad when, you know, I'm... I'm <laughs> right now. <laughs> when you're set up for an uh, uh, um, obvious marketing opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, when, when, when I'm home, I, I, uh, I only have the, the Wi-Fi iPad myself. And uh, you know when I'm when I'm traveling, I'm just like you know my, my phone buzzes. It's like uh, you know it's now your turn in the game. <laughs> and I guess I'll take my turn against these three people or whatever who are waiting for me, and then send it along, wait until it buzzes again. But uh, the, the iPad's great for it. You know, it's like the perfect the perfect size and everything. You'll know, be able to pass it back and forth. It's all awesome. Yeah, the iPad is, is a wonderful experience, but I definitely also play much more on the phone because it's just I mean it's so convenient. It's mm -hmm. always with you and lets you know when when's your turn. <laughs> And my wife always takes the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> I play on my phone most of the time, which is nice because then I, I get the experience on the smaller screen to make sure we can tune that to, to meet the people who are playing that. I don't have an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually I was, I was, I was do you play out. John Deere? Do you play on your phone and sit on his own iPad? So. <laughs> I was actually hanging out uh, with some friends of mine in uh, Las Vegas uh, a couple weeks ago, and one of my friends went and bought an iPad just so he could play it. Yeah, my, my older brother did the same thing. He was like, oh, okay, we're going to battle now, so. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> so quick, uh, tell me quickly the story about how you guys actually um, came together and came up with the, with the idea of, of uh, bringing the great uh, analog game to iOS. Well... It started, uh, it started up, yeah, started up uh, back, uh, we were working on the uh, World of Warcraft miniatures game back in the day and uh, met up with uh, Gary and we, you know, all really connected and, it, you know, played the game a lot and uh, kind of kept in touch and uh, when you re reconnected with John at some point? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so I, had, I had done a um, uh, computerized version of the WoW miniatures game. It must be nice. If I do, I <laughs> showed John a couple years ago, and I knew it wasn't going anywhere until it was Blizzard, right? So it was just something I had done for fun and, and kind of built my network system and how they implement all this. And then um, someone told me that these guys had left Upper Deck and were doing their own game, and so I was interested in it because we were playing a lot of um, similar deck building games at the time. So I kept an eye on it. And when they started to release information about it, I decided that I should track down as many cards as I could and, and just do my own implementation on top of the Wild Minis code. So I had that running when I saw a post from John that you guys were looking for playtesters. I'm like, oh, it's a good opportunity to get back in touch with these guys. I want to playtest the next set, and you know, we'll show them. We'll show them what I built, and you know, who knows where it's going to go. It's just more like, hey, look what I've done. Mm -hmm. And there was no real intention of you know, going anywhere with it. But uh, you know, showed it to John, and the response back was like, oh wow, you work for a video game company. We should talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Kind of, and um, it yeah. just kind of took off from there. It got going, and then you guys all left for months to go to. Essen, so we were kind of just left like, okay, they said they want to do something, but I haven't heard anything, so we can just sit and wait. So. Yeah, well, you know, we had a big uh, big convention and then a fair amount of partying to do out there, so you know, we, started, <laughs> we, we had a little delay. So it looks like you're already planning on or interested in thinking about doing a, um, a mobile or video version. What did, would you have anticipated would have been the hardest thing for uh, a successful implementation? Um, well, I mean, anytime you're moving something that's going to be on the mobile platform, especially for, um, you know, 
a, a card game that has a lot. Of, you know, you have so much information you have to manage, and trying to fit that onto the iPhone in particular is is a real challenge. I mean, it really requires great interface design, really intuitive connections, and I mean, that's it's iterated delivered on that. That's awesome. The iPad, the iPad is super, it's much easier, it's much closer to the main experience, but but being able to play, you know, it's so convenient, so fast on the iPhone. Like I just. You know, I was amazed at how well that was able to be translated. Um, but you know, it took a lot. Even from the very first time we came in, we showed us a version that was working, you know, really well. And, uh, and that's when we knew, like, this was a partner we wanted to work with. Like, being able to come out and you know, execute on that vision and bring this sort of perfect translation of what we built in the physical world into the digital world. Um, and it just got better and better. We had a great playtester group that gave us tons sure. of feedback with the, the, the degree to which we'd iterate. I remember during the process, we would we'd get you know mock frustrated because we'd be like, oh, okay, this is cool, but we would change this and this and this and this. And by the time we would write up our feedback to send it, there would be an update with all of those features changed and everything would be better. We'd be like, oh, okay, well, I guess we're moving along. And so, you know, just like the back and forth and the, uh, you know, the sort of getting it better and, you know, making just lots of little subtle tweaks about, okay, how do constructs get implemented and, you know, how to being able to view your deck. Um, in between, you know, see the contents of your deck because when you're playing online at, with 10 games going on at once and you come back now, you can very easily say, okay, oh, here's what I've been doing. I can see a lot of what my opponent did on their turn. So it's super easy to, um, you know, manage multiple games that you're playing over the course of hours, days, weeks. Um, and so all those little features just really, really did a lot for us. Oh, Go ahead and buy your grand design. <laughs> yeah. Grand design, the grand design, no problem. Uh, um, <laughs> go ahead. So Gary, what what were uh, you? <laughs> is there anything you were dreading or you know looking looking at as a real challenge as as you started really thinking about commercializing it? It's really just the interface. What I what I had running originally was on the PC, so I had you know a, a better toolkit for doing doing windowing and, and putting everything on the screen. And, um, and we had you know basic networking play in place, but it was you know scaling that up to handle thousands of players. And, fit on this tiny screen was you know, certainly a challenge that we didn't have completely solved once we got going, and uh, you know, it kind of came together in a nice way with uh, a little bit of help from the playtesters and uh, feedback from you guys. Yeah, I you know, was involved a little bit watching the playtest and, and on the forums, and um, it was very, very nice to playtest with people who were very near to experts at the game because of their experience and love for the analog version. Um, as we had and have played the you know the analog version of ourselves, but having sort of a group of experts constantly giving you not only you know this is broken, but here's how it maybe should be fixed, and then here's a uh, an idea for an improvement, and uh, that's a, that's a very neat thing. You don't get that generally in video games because of something you're doing is it's a uh, you know original. And there, you know, people haven't played it before. I, I tell you, we have been uh, been real lucky. I mean, with, you know, the story behind Ascension is, you know, really was, you know, we started our own company. And we kind of built the game just for ourselves. You know, for the most part, I would just play with my friends. Like when they would get off work, I have my, you know, and it was something that we all kind of enjoyed so much. And was like, you know what? I think people are really going to like this. Let's do it. You know, it's the first thing we you know, sort of self published and kind of put out there. And the core group of fans that have come on board and that really got into this has been such a rewarding experience of being able to bring them in to play test, not just to build the app, but to test for our expansions, Return of the Fallen that just came out, um, you know, got, that has a ton of playtester feedback, just made it better and better. So we've got like a growing base of just awesome core fans that are not only, you know, out there and, you know, proselytizing, getting their friends to play, but making the game better itself. And, uh, you know, seeing that in the app development was even better because you could, you know, very quickly see the impacts of what they were doing. The feedback cycles were so fast and they were so into it and giving us so much stuff. It was, it's awesome. It's really as much a fan created thing as it is something that we're doing ourselves, so it's a, it's a great feeling. Not as great as buying this extra thing here. I love that card. I I know know it's like my pet what's your, what's your, what's your pet What's your favorite card? What's your favorite card? I, you know, it's it's not fair. It's like choosing between my children. You know, I can't pick one favorite. But the Avatar Golem, I have a, I have a disproportionate love of compared to uh, most everybody else on the team because it just like you know it just sort of forces you to think about your cards differently. And you know, when you can execute on it right, it's just like super awesome. So, Brian, do you have a favorite card? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite card. Um, I really I, mean, I, I have to say I, I like Master Darth. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's more just because it's awesome. That it's you know particularly cool. 
I do like to draw draw a couple extra cards. You know, the, my, the decks that are you know my, my favorite to sort of you know end up end up crafting pretty together are the ones that you know ultimately sort of like start cycling through most of what it's doing in the you know, uh, like each turn or each other turn during a game, and it's one of the cards that's really powerful and enabling in that sort of stretch. So my favorite card is definitely the Scar. The uh, twofold, two two fold, fold, yeah, that, that we, actually, we actually did a poll like of that. our of our fans, and uh, that was the number one uh, favorite card for people that uh, they you know the the open ended is of I can copy anything. Yeah, and it'll get you just over the over that if you're just shy of a, of a defeat, you just don't have quite enough power. Well, that happens to me. It probably has happened to experts like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I like twofold as far as well. Yeah, I'm in agreement. That one's, that one's a lot of fun. The one I just killed is the uh, first turn. There you it's go. One way for. Hour. What? Some people! Oh, come on. <laughs> like, is this, this ring? I just yeah. no, oh, I just got my second favorite. I just got the link device, pop it out with two grand designs in play and a rocket courier. Yeah, and, this is real. Uh, no, this is good. This is, this is awesome. In it's video games, we often have what we call a producer out. cheat. It <laughs> allows you, you hit a few buttons awesome. and you get all the high score and all that stuff. Excited Did someone do that? I'm the cultist avatar. Yeah, this is finally a chance the cultist to beat back. Oh, there goes right. <laughs> Somebody else <laughs> got all the sea tires to come up with the first couple nine of power. So there is nine power. There's a sea tire. That's nine there. power, huh? But uh, I'm hoping that nobody wants to kill her. Oh. Well, <laughs> I can't. Hopefully, John can. I can hopefully kill her. It's only two power. Three power. All right, you got to draw. Oh, Ooh, safe. Safe. <laughs> I've got the yeah. FDS power there, guys. I need at least one more turn with my my giant machine to work. <laughs> got my two full of scar, though. Hey, favorite card. Uh, uh, you whoa, got whoa, power. Whoa, whoa. Oh, see, the guy who warned you. Thanks for watching. This is another action. One of the pictures that we talked about earlier, I was like, ah, oh, get in turn back. So it's like, well, if there's anything you can buy or kill, let's yeah, add a, yeah. are you sure? Yeah. That was the thing that came yeah. very quickly in the development. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I wish there was the are you sure in real life. The number of times I've been like, yeah, buy a mistake, go, and I have two militia. I'm like, oh yeah, there's a cultist, isn't there? Hooray. <laughs> Favorite move, quarter of the game ish. Oh, I finally get it. And you start over. I'm going to put tablet, I'm gonna put tablet, I'm just on. Put tablet into play. Immediately into play. Oh, for one rune. For one rune. Play my avatar golem using. Oh, wait, hold on. No. Yeah. Play my avatar golem to score two points extra because the tablet is in play. Then immediately use said tablet. I like this game. <laughs> and let's take another turn. <sighs> hey now, my second turn. 